Good morning, Sasha. Good morning, Doug. Well, good evening to you, I guess. What time is it there? It's 8 a.m. All right, it's 9 p.m. here. So before we go into our main interview, thank you for joining my YouTube channel. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. I'm just going to start off with some icebreakers. Sounds good. All right. Are you able to see the PowerPoint? Yes, I can see it perfectly. All right. So the icebreaker questions are called, let's say. Okay. Let's say you didn't have time to do your workout and you feel very tired. Would you just skip the workout or still do it? Well, there's a couple parts to this question. So if you didn't have time to do your workout, then that's a bit different than feeling tired. So it sounds like there's a few excuses happening here. <laughs> Generally, I stick to my workouts no matter what. However, I do adjust them. So there are certain times where I feel very energetic and very strong, and that's when I would do a very rigorous workout. But if I'm feeling extremely drained and exhausted, I don't think it's actually good to then push yourself to do something really intense because you might actually feel worse after. So then I might do some gentle yoga, just some stretching, or go for a long walk with my dog. Something that feels like movement to get, <clears throat> excuse me, get my blood pumping and lift my energy, but nothing that would exhaust me. So I don't skip workouts altogether, but I will modify them depending on my energy and the amount of time that I have. All right. Sounds great. Okay. So you wouldn't push yourself? No. You need That's to great. really respect where your body is at on that particular day. All right, that sounds great. That's a very good tip for everyone. Okay, let's go on, move on to our second question. Let's say you're late to work and you didn't have time to wash your hair. Would you take time to wash your hair or just put a cap on and go to work because you don't wanna be late? I would put my hair in a bun, which is my <laughs> trick for dirty hair. Um, yeah, I don't, I think there are ways that you can get away with still looking good and looking presentable without doing your full routine. So yeah, put that hair in a ponytail or a bun and you're good to go. And you'll still look very neat and tidy and put together and no one will know. All right, a bun. All right, that's a yes. great tip. Okay, let's move on to number three. Let's say you have a date with your boyfriend in the early stages of relationship. So you really don't know he was really into you yet. Apparently he didn't show up without notice. Would you try to find <laughs> out or would you wait for him to call you? Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I would say if you had set a date and there was a time you had committed to meeting, then it's really up to him to reach out and explain why he didn't show up. However, I am the kind of person that tends to give people the benefit of the doubt. I would probably send a text message and say, where are you? Is everything okay? However, the person could then at that point make up a lie. And it's really, really, really important to listen to your gut instinct. And if you have a bad feeling about it, that it's a lie or it's an excuse, you don't have to accept that. I think it's very, very rare for someone to be in a situation where they've committed to meeting up with you and they can't take 10 seconds to send you a text message if they're not gonna be able to make it. Something extremely extreme has to happen. And 
So if they're giving you an excuse after the fact, then something is definitely wrong there. And I would really listen to your intuition on that. All right. 10 seconds, just a text message, 10 exactly. seconds. Exactly. I'll explain later. I can't make it. Right. All Not right. So hard. go with your instincts, your gut. Yes. All right. Let's move on to our next question. Let's say you're in a crowded subway and someone bumps into you and doesn't even say sorry. Would you get mad or just think he or she was in a hurry and try to understand? I would probably in the mo just in that sudden moment feel annoyed. However, the quicker you can flip that to assuming the best of the person, the better. Because otherwise you're just giving yourself an additional bad feeling, bad energy for something that <clears throat> someone else did. And there's just as strong of a chance that they were in a hurry and they didn't realize what they were doing. They're not doing anything malicious to you. And I feel that the more positive energy you can put out into the world and towards that person who did that, then that might actually turn their day around too. And sometimes we're in a hurry and we bump into somebody and we don't mean to, and that's just life. Wow. All right. Thank you so much. Last but not the least, let's say it's raining cats and dogs and you don't have an umbrella. Would you run to a store and buy an umbrella if there was a store nearby or would you just wait calmly for the rain to calm down? It depends what I'm doing. Recently, I went on a trip to Asheville, North Carolina and I really wanted to go for a walk and it started to rain and I didn't have an umbrella. And so I went to the store and I bought one because I just really wanted to be outside. If I wasn't in a hurry and it, there was a huge downpour, then an umbrella probably isn't going to help you anyway. So you might as well just stay put and wait for it to stop. And that happens a lot where I live in Florida. We have these massive tropical downpours. And what's nice in those moments is there's always people waiting for the rain to stop. So you'll probably end up striking up an interesting conversation with somebody. That is awesome. All right. All right, Sasha, thank you for answering those five questions. They were very great. Uh, they were awesome. All right, before um, we begin, just please introduce yourself, your name, your current location, and what you do, and anything else that you want to describe about yourself. Sure. My name is Sasha Stone, and I live in West Palm Beach, Florida, with my dog that you see right behind me over there. And I work as a technical support manager for Automatic, which is the company behind WordPress. So we support WordPress.com customers in creating websites. And I also am a work from home wellness expert. I'm a life coach and I help people create healthy routines and rituals and habits to thrive in their work from home life. And I was doing that even before COVID because my company is a distributed company. We all work from home. And it's something that I have been interested in for several years because I think there is a unique challenge to maintaining your wellness when you work from home. And now it's even more relevant because so many people find themselves working from home when they didn't expect to be. All right. So you are now in Florida. Yes. How is the COVID situation over there? It's not good. We were pretty late in the game, I think, in acknowledging the severity of what was happening. And there was a period of time where everything was closed and everyone had to stay at home. That was quite brief. And then there was a big rush to open things back up and get business going, which of course is understandable, but as expected, that resulted in a huge spike in cases. And so things were not able to open up to the extent that would actually make them lucrative again. 
And I think we've got to a point where cases are starting to drop again, but school just started and university just started. And I think also people are fatigued by all of it. And so they're just being a lot more lenient in their lives in terms of who they're spending time with and gathering. But we're still not able to meet in large groups. There aren't any community events or anything like that. We need to wear masks anytime we're indoors, that kind of thing. So it's here. I do have, at this point, there are three people in my life I know who've had COVID and gone through the full thing. Um, and that always, it's terrible for them and it's good for the people they know to see and realize what they're going through and that it's not a simple thing that you can just be sick and get over it and move on with your life. So yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely still here. It's definitely a big challenge and I don't see it going away anytime soon, unfortunately. That's very, very unfortunate. Yeah. And since like you are a life coach, mm -hmm. could you tell us how then we should stay healthy and some of your personal tips or routines that you're doing right now? And also how can we contact you? Sure. So for me, the number one most important routine in my life and that I teach other people is your morning routine, especially if you're working from home. I think a lot of people assume that one of the biggest perks from working from home is, oh, I can just roll out of bed and start my work day <laughs> in my pajamas. And that might be exciting for a day or two, but it gets old really, really fast. And what you'll realize is the routine and the ritual of getting ready for the day is part of what wakes you up and makes you feel alert and focus makes you feel put together i actually recently read an article about the, how the way we dress actually affects the way that we think it's not just the way that people see us but it's the way that you see yourself it's the way that you're presenting yourself so the way that I encourage people to approach it is basically get yourself ready for your work day in the same way that you would if you were leaving your house and going to an office. And if you have the extra time because you are working from home, that's a perfect opportunity to start mixing in some exercise in the morning, maybe some meditation, definitely something nourishing to eat before you start your work day. So, to me, that is the number one thing you can do because the morning is the foundation for your day. So if you can start your day taking care of yourself, making yourself feel good, look good, then that's more likely to carry through the rest of the day. Not always, but it's going to give you a pretty good chance of having a better day than if you did none of those things. What was your other question? My other question was, so what, so specifically, what mm -hmm. do you do in your morning okay. routines or cause that's the foundation for you? Yes. So what I do is wake up, drink water first thing, as soon as I get out of bed. And then I'll usually go and brush my teeth because that's something that will wake me up and I won't feel tempted to get back into bed. And then I meditate. I like to do that first thing because I find if I don't, then it's easy to skip. So I'll meditate and then I exercise. And for me, that's usually alternating between doing an at-home strengthening routine or going for a run. And if I go for a run, I bring my dog. And if I've done the strength routine, then I'll take my dog for a walk after. And then I do my grooming. I take a shower, I get dressed, I put on makeup. Usually I have meetings throughout the day where I'm meeting with people on Zoom. So I like to look presentable, but even if I don't, I still put some makeup on my face because it just makes me feel good. And then I'll make a smoothie for breakfast and some tea. 
and then I start my work day. Wow, you are so yeah. pumped up. Yeah. <laughs> Sasha, so you're not going to work. You're, you're at home, right? You're, you're working at home now. I always was. So that hasn't changed for me. Oh, okay. So it's been like yeah. a daily routine for you. Yeah. This has been my life. So the company that I work for, Automatic, is a work from home company. We have colleagues all over the world and we all work from home or wherever you happen to be at that time. And even before that, before I joined Automatic and I was life coaching full time, I also worked from home and met with most of my clients like this over Zoom. So I'm very familiar with the work from home kind of lifestyle and routine. Wow, you are so prepared for the COVID-19 <laughs> situation. Yeah, yeah. surprisingly. But Sasha, a lot of people aren't like you because we are not used to it, but somehow this yeah. year we have to be so good at it. You know, we have to be good yeah. at working at home. We have to be good at uh, doing homeschooling. Now we've got to be parents and teachers as well. And how do you like, how can we contact you if we need help? Because I think a lot sure. of people need help. Yeah. So I have a website. It's called thatdistributedlife.com. So and let me just you, let me just re, uh, revive that. That distributed dot com. That distributed life dot com. Okay, so that distributed life dot com. Yes, keep Correct. on going. So you can go to my website. There are resources there. The homepage is a five step thrive guide for working from home, and I have videos and blog posts with all kinds of tips and whatnot, but you can also contact me directly through my website. And people are also welcome to email me. My email address is my first name, Sasha at SashaMarieStone.com. And um, I'm always happy to answer any questions and just see how people are doing and if there's anything I can offer. All right, I'll just put a link down. Perfect. And also, since we talked about physical routines or morning routines, a lot of people are going through psychological problems. Mm -hmm. It's emotional and also mental health problems. Yeah. And along with that, we are not able to see people because yeah. we're like in some places, we are not allowed to gather and we're like fully locked down. How should we overcome this? How, how would you give us some tips on relationships? Because we feel lonely. Yeah. Well, I can say that I definitely relate to that. I live alone and I really feel that impact of not being able to gather with people, which is something that's really important to me. So I want to say that I fully relate to that and I don't think it's an easy thing that, oh, just do your morning routine and you'll feel fine. I think there's things we can do to help. However, I also think the first thing is to just really acknowledge how you're feeling. And that in itself is very powerful because I think that we've adopted some idea that it's somehow wrong to feel sad or it's, it's bad to feel lonely. And of course, those things don't feel good, but that's part of the human experience. And the more that you try to ignore how you're feeling, that tends to make those feelings even stronger because it's like they want, they want you to acknowledge that they're there, that you're sad, that you're lonely. So really acknowledge that. If you have people that you can reach out to, that you can call and that you can talk to and share how you're feeling, then do that. It's, it can be easy to get in the habit of isolation, especially if you live alone because you're just used to being by yourself and then it feels more difficult to reach out. Something that I've been experimenting with that works really well is taking opposite action. So basically, when you feel sad, everyone has their own tendencies. So for me, if I feel sad or I feel exhausted, my go-to is I'm gonna lie on the couch and I'm gonna watch TV. That's my go-to. 
However, it doesn't make me feel good. So it's interesting, we have these tendencies or these things that we lean toward, but they don't necessarily help us feel better. You know, I'm, it, I might enjoy watching a show for 30 minutes, but if I'm there for two hours, I feel so much worse. So I've been experimenting with taking the opposite action that I feel like doing. So if I'm noticing, oh God, I feel exhausted. I just want to lie on the couch and do nothing. Then I'll go for a walk instead, or I'll wash the dishes or I'll vacuum my apartment. But basically let me try doing something different. And it really helps. And same thing, if I'm feeling really sad and then my, my instinct is to isolate and not talk to anybody, I will take the opposite action and call a friend of mine. Or I'll do an Instagram story and just share something from my day. And it picks me up. So I, and I don't want to take credit for this opposite action. I heard it in an interview I was reading about depression. So this is something I think that therapists recommend. So I would say experiment with it. And again, it's not about doing something extremely opposite, meaning just like when we were talking about if you're feeling exhausted, don't push yourself to do a rigorous workout, but do something gentle. You know, so if I feel like lying around on the couch, I'm not going to go do a boxing routine, but I might go for a walk around the block. And then if my energy picks up from doing that, then I might want to do something more active, you know, or if I call a friend and I feel better, then I might want to do something creative. So energy kind of builds on itself. And I think it also can deplete in the same way. So try that what's you know in that moment where you feel that tendency to isolate or lie around and do nothing what is a gentle opposite action you could do instead does that make sense that is so powerful gentle opposite action that is amazing that is amazing yeah so if you want to just lie on the couch you wouldn't go boxing so right. you would do something gentle like maybe you could just fold some clothes yes exactly cleaning is something that can be really therapeutic because it's, it's a gentle movement and it's literally cleansing your space and getting things in order, which can make you feel like you have things in order as well. Sasha, this is so helpful. You know, Good. doing the opposite action, really, I think it's going to help a lot of the viewers and you're doing such a good job on that. And uh, one last uh, question before we leave. Sure. So um, you're doing everything great physically, emotionally, and anything else you want to change or you, you think that needs to change onwards, mm -hmm. like in the near future, because now we are going through an untacked period where we can't meet people anymore and yeah. we don't know when this is going to end. So what are some preparations or you think that would help us or what are, what are you preparing for? I don't even know, honestly, if I have a good answer for that. I, it's, there is so much unknown. And for me, one of the things that I find a little uh, scary is a strong word, but I'm a very physical person and I like to be affectionate with people in my life and not being able to touch people and hug people is something that I find really challenging. And I'm wondering if there's going to be a huge cultural shift around that for decades to come around not touching other people. So I'm curious to see. And I think, I think maybe having that, that mentality of curiosity instead of fear, you know, it is something that can help you through the unknown factor. So, hmm, this is, this is a really interesting period of time. How is this going to affect us? Let me keep an open mind and be curious and also be very mindful of the media that you are choosing to absorb in any given day. We have 
we have complete control over that. Nobody is forcing us to listen to the news or to read certain articles. Take it in in small doses. Be mindful of what you're taking in. Notice how it makes you feel. I think it's important to be informed, but the media thrives on dramatics and on making us feel scared. And so everything gets really played up. And that doesn't mean that this isn't very serious. It is. But just know that that's part of their MO is to make you feel scared. So be very mindful about how much you're taking in. Stay curious. And also, what are some things you can create in your life to look forward to? I think that's part of what makes this difficult is it's hard to plan. Um, you know, I can't make plans to go visit my family that lives in Canada. And so instead, I booked a vacation with my boyfriend to go to a cabin in the mountains. So we're still going to be isolated and we're not going to be around other people, but we're going to be in a completely different environment in nature, which I love, be able to go hiking. So if there's things you can do to look forward to, even if it's a staycation from work, I took a week off of work maybe two months ago. And it was wonderful. And I was at home, but I read books and I relaxed and I went on bike rides and I went to the beach and I did things that I might do if I was on vacation somewhere else. And that was something that felt really good. So create things that you can look forward to. All right. You're doing great. All right. Everyone check out that distributedlife.com. Am I right, yeah, Sasha? That's correct. All right. Thank you so much for sharing about your morning routine. I think that was very powerful. And also acknowledging your emotions and yes. doing gentle opposite actions. I'm going to try that from Great. tomorrow or now. <laughs> and Sasha, I won't be scared anymore. Good. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> and also, should, can we do some physical actions on this zoom let's say let's give a high five put your hands up all right high five because we're doing <laughs> high fives with our elbows now yeah yeah how can we hug like we've got to all right i'm gonna hug you all right sasha <laughs> all right. blow kisses all right okay that feels that feels great it does <laughs> all right i hope this was one of your morning routine yeah, well, it is. This is part of my morning routine. I'm about to start work. All right. Have a great day. Thanks, Jen. It was great Thank to you. see you. Great to see you. And thanks for joining again. And bye-bye for now. Bye.